morning everyone so per request I am showing what to do with a sourdough starter I was just recently gifted some sourdough starter that is 150 years old I was gifted it by Betsy Taylor who is a local baker here she sells some great bread I definitely suggest getting some bread from her her loaves start off at six dollars it's really good this starter is actually from Alaska originally started in Alaska and it's 150 years old I have been feeding it so it's huge now. Um, you really only need 50 grams of starter retained, but I'm going to be giving some to friends and family, which is what these jars are here. And I'm actually going to have to break this into two parts for the video because I'm going to need to discard some of this before I feed it. If I don't discard any of it, I'm going to end up with like a bathtub full of starter and that's just too much for me. I'm not baking that much. <laughs> so. I am going to show you how to do this. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to discard some of this and I'm going to bring it down to a more reasonable weight, which the weight that I'm going to bring it down to is actually still too high for if I was just going to be feeding it daily, but I'm going to be baking several batches of sourdough today, so I'm going to give myself a little bit no more knowing that it's not going to have time to grow beyond my jar. Which, by the way, sourdough starter is alive. There's colonies of microbes in it. Um, they actually say that the sourdough starter takes a little bit of each person that it touches. That might creep some people out, but I actually think that's really neat. So, like, if your great-grandma was making a sourdough starter and it was passed on down to you, a little bit of your great-grandma is going to be still with that sourdough starter. Um, the sourdough starter can be either kept in the fridge or it can be kept at room temperature. Around 70 degrees is ideal, 70, 75 degrees. Um, it's usually what I keep my house at, so I'm just keeping mine out. It does grow and it uh, lets go of gas and whatnot, so it's great to have a lid not sealed tightly. Some people seal it tightly. I like letting the air escape, so I just let it sit there. Again, I am new with this, so this is uh, based on my two days of owning it. <laughs> so the first thing that you do is you're going to weigh your sourdough starter. So you can, you can do measurements, but it's a lot easier if you just have a scale. So this guy, a lady, it's a girl, the mother dough. So this lady is huge. She is at 1793 grams right now. Now the jar weighs 998 grams. I wrote it on the top of the lid so I can remember how much it is. Now that is the weight with the lid on. You want to make sure to be consistent when you do it. However, the lid's only 25 grams or so, so it's not that bad if you accidentally forget. Um, some people swear by discarding some of it um, just because they think that it's going to get rid of some of the bad stuff in it and make room for more good stuff in it. I keep reading all kinds of mixed opinions on that. Um, mainly, the, the best reason for discarding some of it is so you don't end up with a bathtub full of starter. Uh, I started off with 98 grams of starter two days ago. So it was given to me in a, a tiny jar, smaller than these jars, this is the next size down. And by the time I got home with it, it had already risen to the top of that tiny jar. And then I fed it, which um, it, it, then, it then grew the next day. It was at 262 grams. So the way that you feed it is you weigh the starter, and then you want to do equal parts of flour and water. So if my starter weighs 98 grams, you're going to add 98 grams of water and 98 grams of flour. Um, you can see this is actually active and very active, very bubbly. It tripled in size overnight. It was only down here around this mark, around 20 ounces. Or I think that's 20 ounces. can't read. <laughs> it's clear. But uh, it was down here, and it's tripled overnight. So I fed it last at around 7.30 at night, and it's around 7.30 this morning. So I need to bring this lady down. So what I'm going to be doing with, uh, I had, a, it was 17.93 grams jar and starter. So if I take off that 998 grams that the jar weighs, it's going to leave me with 795. I'm going to be getting rid of and um, discarding some of it, but I'm actually, I'm not just going to throw it away. I'm going to be gifting several of them to some friends and family. And then that's going to leave me with 395 grams of my starter. 
so that's much more manageable. Now, if I did feed it that 395, it's it's going to overflow. So I'm I'm uh, going to be baking with it though, so I'm not as concerned. They do say that the peak time to bake with it is three hours after you feed it. Now you'll see, so the bubbles are here now. After I feed it, the bubbles are gonna be gone. Part of that is I'm gonna be stirring it and releasing some of those gases, and then I'm gonna be adding in that new flour and feeding those microbes, flour and water, and that's gonna just get rid of the bubbles. So when it's ready to bake, you're gonna see a lot more of those bubbles, and I'm guessing it's probably gonna double in volume by the time I'm ready to bake. Um, Hopefully it won't triple in volume because then it's going to be outside over there. Which that is also why I named my my starter Ida. It's over. It's out, um. It's because of one of my favorite childhood books, Outside Over There. So I am going to turn off the video for a moment so that I can discard some of this, and then I will make a little video of feeding it. Um. What you are going to need, though, to prepare, you're going to need water, which filtered water is the best for it. Chlorine, chlorinated water, can actually kill microbes. So you want to go with some filtered water. Um, I have some bread flour. You can use regular flour, especially just for feeding it. But um, when you bake, you're going to want to use bread flour. It's going to make it a lighter, less dense bread than if you used regular flour. Um, and you're going to want to have a kitchen scale set to grams. It's also nice to have a little notepad or whatnot so that you can keep track of your measurements. Um, and something to scoop out the flour, obviously. Something to hold it in your containers. And then you can, I, 